to Mankad or not is the question and this question has not left cricket for several decades. Possibly it might never will unless and until a certain decision is taken to rule it out completely from the laws of the game. I'll begin with the point of 2019 IPL when Ravi Ashwin who was then with the Kings XI Punjab had monkered Jaws Butler when the batsman went out from his crease and the dismissal sparked a massive debate on social media and there was a lot of opinion which was divided. Interesting part was in that series in one of the matches later against RCB, Virat was I remember standing on the boundary rope and uh, Ashwin was batting so he tried to uh, hit a lofted shot, got caught by Virat. Virat as usual used some abusive language and made the gesture of monkering. So it was like a vilification of Ravi Ashwin from uh, the then uh, Indian captain, also still the current captain uh, of India, Virat Kohli, which tried to signify as uh, what Ravi Ashwin had done was something wrong. Now, uh, this has again come up because as you know, the IPL 2020 is going to be held in UAE from September 19th and already Ashwin, who is now with the Delhi Capitals, his coach Ricky Ponting has said that he would not allow such a thing to happen again. Again, there is a stirring over this word against this dismissal. Why is it so controversial? Let's look at the background of Mankading. Now, the important point to remember is it is completely within the purview of the laws of cricket. Mankading is considered still by many as one of the most immoral ways of getting a batsman out. It is named after the legendary Indian all-rounder Vinu Mankad and he was one of the first to get a thousand runs and a hundred wickets. And it is a method of a run out where a bowler dismisses a non-striker by hitting the bales before bowling when the latter is outside the crease. Now this is a legally permissible dismissal, you have to remember that. And yet it is considered against the spirit of the game. So one of the first points of contention is if it is um, within the laws of the game, why is it considered against the spirit of the game? Uh, please remember also that uh, sledging or mental disintegration, those are things which have been pushed by the Aussies over many years uh, to rattle batsmen and it all, almost comes down to abuse and even transgresses those limits. A lot of things are being said. So all that is fine. Even when the two umpires are there, there are stump mics. All of that is okay. But this is one rule uh, which has come under a lot of scrutiny. Um, Shane Wan, incidentally, the master of gamesmanship, I'm a huge fan of his, but uh, we've all seen what an amazing uh, guy he was when it came to gamesmanship. Now he, at that point in time, uh, said a lot against Ravi Ashwin. He was, of course, um, the brand ambassador of Rajasthan Royals at that point in time. Josh Butler was from RR. So Shane Wan uh, took to Twitter at that point in time and he said it was a disgraceful and low act. Sir Donald Bradman, the great Bradman, in his autobiography, Farewell to Cricket, had labelled monkering a legitimate part of the game. So for Sir Don, it was fine that this was part of the game. So if anyone uses this as, as a form to, uh, of dismissal against a batsman, there is absolutely no harm in that. Nothing wrong is being committed. Now, the original monkard happened during India's second test against Australia in Sydney in 1947. Vinu Mankad ran out Bill Brown at the non-striker's end for backing up too far. The MCC says in a statement, this law is essential. Without it, non-strikers could back up at liberty several yards down the pitch and a law is needed to prevent such an action. This is coming straight from MCC. I'll take you through some instances of monkering in test cricket. So the first one was, like I said, 1947-48 Bill Brown by Vinu Mankad, Australia versus India at Sydney. Ian Redpath by Charlie Griffith, Australia vs West Indies, Adelaide, 1968-69. Derek Randall by Ewan Chatfield, England vs New Zealand, Christchurch, 1977-78. Sikandar Bakht by Alan Hurst, Pakistan vs Australia at Perth in 78-79. There have been instances of monkering in ODIs, in T20 and plenty in first class cricket. So this is nothing very unique to test matches alone. I'll take you through something more interesting. There are instances of not monkering, which means that the bowler did have the chance to dismiss a batsman, but that person did not. And it had different 
uh, impacts on the game. So very quickly, Courtney Walsh reviews to Mankad last man Salim Jafar of Pakistan in a group match in the 1987 World Cup. He let him off with a warning. Pakistan went on to win the match, while the defeat contributed to the West Indies failing to progress to the semi-final. Ask yourself, what would have happened if Courtney Walsh had mankaded this batsman? Maybe West Indies uh, could have gone through. Mohammad Rafiq of Bangladesh did not run out Omar Gul of Pakistan in a 2003 test match in Multan. Pakistan won the match by one wicket. It was a test match. Ravi Ashwin, yes, he pops up again. <laughs> Manka did Lahiru Tirimane of Sri Lanka in a group match in the Commonwealth Bank Series 2012 held in Australia. However, the standing umpires Paul Rifle and Billy Bowden, after discussion, asked India if they wanted to reconsider the appeal and withdraw uh, their appeal. Indian captain then Virender Sehwag withdrew the appeal. Sehwag told them that Ashwin had won Tirimane before running him out. However, Mahila Jayavardhane, the Sri Lankan ca uh, captain, said he hadn't heard the warning. Um, Chris Gale did not uh, mankad Oin Morgan. This happened in 2012 ICC World 2020 in the Super 8 match stage. And uh, of course, Chris Gale being the star that he is and with a lot of humor, gestured funnily. Eventually, West Indies won the match by 15 runs. So good luck to the West Indies there. During IPL 2019, Krunal Pandya, Mumbai Indians chose not to run out Mayank Agarwal of the Kings XI Punjab in a game which Punjab won. Now, after this uh, controversy has again erupted and with the IPL uh, to be played uh, in the UAE, Kolkata Knight Riders captain Dinesh Karthik in a conversation uh, has said that he has a couple of issues. He says, uh, I have some issues with this Mankad run out. First is the implementation of it. Second is the name Mankad run out. So his first point is that when you talk about implementation, all the way from Don Bradman to Sunil Gavaskar and the ICC and MCC, all, everybody says that it is part of the game. It is completely within the rules. Uh, the ICC and MCC have also taken a stand that it is okay. So Within quotes, I don't see the reason why bowlers or any team that does it is looked at in a negative way. Now, this is coming from a wicketkeeper batsman. He uh, is also against the fact that when Vinu Mankad uh, took out Brown, uh, why was the dismissal called Mankaded and it had uh, nothing to do with Brown, who was obviously uh, breaking certain rules and uh, taking a head start, and that is why uh, he lost his wicket. So. Uh, this dismissal is still called Mankadid and uh, as long as it exists, possibly it will go on uh, on those lines. I have a few points to say uh, on my take uh, on this matter. Now, since the ICC and MCC, they ratify the dismissal as legal, it should be fine. Why create more controversy by saying it is not in the spirit of the game? There are quite a few comments uh, coming in from various people. It happened during the uh, IPL last time. Uh, poor Ravi Ashwin was hit very hard by certain quarters and, and saying this was a disgusting act. And uh, Shane Vaughan and quite a few others went on to say that the umpires should have declared it a dead ball. And why did they allow the dismissal to happen? All of that stuff happened. If it is not in the spirit of the game, then this mode of dismissal should have been removed. The mode of dismissal is part of cricket. It is ratified by uh, the laws of cricket. It has been ratified by some of the, the biggest guns of cricket. So why is there this unsavory controversy that if a bowler runs out somebody in this fashion, that person is basically labeled as very unsportsmanlike. I think it's, it's grossly unfair. Bowlers have by and large taken a pro stand on the matter, but not Shane Vaughan. Um, and that's a bit surprising because uh, as we all know that the game is getting loaded against the bowlers. The in the shorter formats, there are too many restrictions uh, on the bowlers. The massive crowds come in to see their fours and sixes because for them that is entertainment. The bowlers get hammered. Uh, good bowlers may even get hit for six sixes in an over. Or you have pretty good spinners. I, I remember uh, one of them getting hammered for 26 runs in an over and the poor guy starts crying on the pitch because he can't take that hammering any longer. It's abject humiliation. So in those circumstances, 
why should a bowler be tied down? So ask yourself this question to Mankad or not.